Hey, good morning, Asbury Church. It's a new day, and uh, glad to be with you this morning. We're continuing our sermon series and our worship time focused on influence, and today specifically on transformation and how that uh, happens uh, in us as we're followers of Jesus. I want to give you a heads up that uh, throughout the day, we're, we're also going to be uh, commissioning, praying for the leaders of our church and uh, how they will lead us in the transformation of our lives, not only in the church, but also in the community. And so later in the service, at the end of my sermon, we're going to uh, invite all the leaders. You'll see some pictures of them, but uh, respond to some uh, questions that if we were in person, we would do that here together, but we're going to do it online today. And so I'll be referring to our church's annual report. And so uh, you can go to jesusisthebridge.org and scroll down and see the annual report. Uh, there's all the things that we accomplished and joys and celebrations from last year, our goals. But then also at the back of it is the, um, the list of the leaders that we're going to refer to uh, at the commissioning time at the end of, our, uh, at the, end of the service, uh, the sermon uh, part of our worship today. So you can be uh, checking into that, look at that uh, as we worship or at any time. And uh, to begin, though, as we're thinking about uh, transformation... There's a great old hymn that talks about how God is ultimately who transforms us and changes us uh, from, from what we have been to what God wants us to be. And so uh, Pat and Pam Thornton and Deb and Dan DeCamp are going to share for us, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. And imagine that image of God shaping us, transforming us uh, more and more into the image and the likeness of Jesus. Asbury, this is Pastor Heather Dorr with your announcements for Sunday, January 24th, 2021. Here at Asbury, we have quarterly newcomers gatherings for those who are interested in membership at Asbury or are new to Asbury and want to ask some questions and get to know some people. Uh, we are going to have our next newcomer gathering today at 4 p.m. via Zoom. So if you would like that invite, I ask you to uh, send a message to the Asbury Facebook page and I can get you that invite today for that online Zoom meeting so that you can find out more about Asbury. In a few weeks, we are going to begin the season of Lent. 
Ash Wednesday this year is on February 17th. Uh, we are putting together Lenten and Easter bags so that every household has some items that are uh, different welcomes and uh, we misuse from committees and teams here at Asbury along with items to help you mark the special season in the church calendar. If your team or committee would like to submit something to these bags for the whole church, that due date is this Friday, January 29th. So please get anything to Patty in the office by this Friday so that those bags can be put together this coming week. And uh, as we share more about these special Lenten and Easter bags, if you would like one delivered to your home or one mailed to you because you don't live in the area, you can contact the office and we'll make sure that we get those bags to you here in the next few weeks. I hope that you uh, join us next Sunday, the 31st, and it will be Confirmation Sunday here at Asbury. I hope you have a wonderful week. Goodbye. So as Pastor Heather, Heather said, the next week, Confirmation Sunday, and Pastor Heather will be giving uh, the message uh, here as well. And, you know, last week, if you uh, saw, we're so proud, so pleased that she's been a part of our congregation, a member of this church, and uh, it was announced last week that she'll be uh, appointed to the First United Methodist Church in Jefferson, Iowa. So we are certainly going to make the most of the time that we have with uh, Pastor Heather, uh, but then want to send her off in another part of the state to do God's will there. And uh, again, we're so proud of her, so pleased uh, for her, and happy uh, for this new appointment for her. Kind of sad for ourselves, though, but, but uh, we'll adjust, we'll be fine. So. So for our scripture reading now, I want you to turn to the Gospel of John, and we're continuing our, our sermon series about influence, and actually thinking through the process by which uh, we transform the world, how we influence others, and actually how we make disciples. It began with the relationships, that the importance of how we connect with one another, God desires a relationship with us. It continued with those relationships are, are meant to first be uh, built upon trust and how we earn trust amongst uh, the people around us. God earned our trust in Jesus. But then a vision, a direction of where we want to go. Last week we talked about uh, the Sermon on the Mount, how Jesus gave a vision of what we could be like, our character, our nature, as we become more and more like Him as followers of Jesus. Well, now we want to talk about transformation and the way that that happens, and the importance that, that happens. of and, and one of the ways that Jesus helped bring about that transformation was by setting an example. So that is both an inward and an outer process. And so in the Gospel of John, we see now uh, chapter 13. This is the last night that Jesus was with his disciples. And John uh, records quite a bit of what Jesus said and also what he did. And this is the only place in the Gospels where uh, this story is recorded. Uh, but Jesus uh, washes uh, their feet. And so uh, Michael's going to share with us now uh, uh, John chapter uh, 13. We're going to start with the first five verses and then uh, skip down to verse, uh, verse 12. So, Michael, would you share that uh, for us? Thank you, Pastor Tom. Uh, we're starting on John chapter 13. We'll start with verse number 1. Now, before the festival of the Passover... Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. And now we're skipping down to verse number 12. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table, and he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 
For I have set you an example that you should that you that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning again, everyone. It is just a, an absolute honor and blessing to be with you this morning on this cold day as we anticipate more snow coming. For some people, that's a yay, and for some people, that's a ugh. But uh, either way, it's just glorious to continue to watch the seasons grow and to, as we traverse through these seasons, and we know that although there can be as much snow as possible that hits this ground, but we know that spring is coming and we will once again see the, um, the, the earth come alive again with greenery and just sunshine and blessings. And I know that is a huge excitement for many of us. I want to uh, remind you that uh, prayers are only a click away. If you go to JesusIsTheBridge.org, uh, the prayer button is right there for you at any time of the day. Uh, Pat Thornton was on last week. Um, and he discussed the excitement that he felt, and he talked about the number of prayer uh, volunteers that we have uh, with the prayer team, and also how many prayers uh, have been lifted up. Um, and that was really exciting and fun to listen to, and you could hear the excitement in his voice, and it just brought a smile to my face, knowing that we as a family continue to pray for each other. I want to thank Pat, I want to thank all the people on the prayer team, um, and also for God who is always there to listen, and, and may we continue to build our relationship with him. Uh, glad to hear that Ken and Linda Jones are both improving and recovering from COVID. Uh, they also got word from Jan Windmiller uh, this morning that her son has tested positive, although it seems like maybe his symptoms are mild. But let's continue to be in prayer for all of those our families and individuals who are affected um, by the pandemic. So uh, huge prayers to uh, the Windmiller family and to the Jones family and to all of those who are affected. I uh, also received a uh, word from Amber Jerson this morning, uh, prayers for her cousin Savannah, uh, was dealing with a miscarriage, um, and also to Amber and her co-workers um, that are also dealing with COVID. Uh, continue prayers for Pastor Heather, as Pastor Tom just talked about, as she prepares for the big move to Jefferson, Iowa. We want to uh, think of her and her family during this time. We also have prayers for the family of Harry Hepler, as he passed away this week and his funeral was yesterday. Um, it was uh, wonderful to sit at my job at Central High School uh, with Gail Baldwin and to talk about Harry and um, to see her smile as she thought about him and reminisced about him and the contagious smile that he had. Um, uh, Gail also mentioned all the hugs and the happiness that he would spread on Sunday mornings. So a great legacy was left uh, in so many ways by Harry and prayers to Peggy and the entire family. And other than just reminding us all to continue to be in prayer for each other and continue to uh, feel free to lift up those prayers on Facebook this morning and also on JesusIsTheBridge.org, just a reminder to be good people and to help each other and may God continue to bless all of us. Let's take an opportunity now to pray the unison prayer that's on the screen. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, it is so easy to remain as I am. I am comfortable. This feels safe. And yet I know you have called me to something more. The vision for the future includes me changing. Allow me to yield myself, yield to myself like the caterpillar in the cocoon in order to be transformed into a new creation for your kingdom. Amen. Gracious God, 
We do praise you and thank you that you have come to us in Jesus because you want to save this world. And you've told us that when we follow Jesus, we will pick up and continue his work, his ministry, to bring your healing, your hope, your light to this world. Dear God, we know there are difficult times and challenges that many of us face in our personal lives, uh, through illnesses, uh, disease, uh, hardships, economic challenges. We're especially uh, praying for Harry Hepler's family and ask your grace and your comfort and strength uh, for them as they mourn his loss. What a blessing he was to so many of us. Gracious God, we also pray for our nation and for our new president. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris that you would help uh, lead them to lead this nation in the path that you would have us go. We pray for all of our leaders on both sides of the aisle that we would work together for a common goal, a goodness of life and liberty, the pursuit of happiness, of justice for all. May we be your instruments within this country to shape it in the way in which you would have us go. And dear God, while we want to build trust and safety in our nation, we also know we must build it in our neighborhoods and in our own families and in the community where we are right now. We pray that your spirit would so fill us that we would see our neighbors as friends, as someone to care for, as someone who's different even, as a neighbor as well. We pray that you would help us to build bridges for you so that you can transform not only us, but our community, our nation, and our world. Even though there's many challenges, we have hope, we have strength, we have the power of your Spirit within us so that we go forward to face whatever it is, knowing that you go with us and you love us and we'll be okay. And so it is with that hope and trust and confidence that we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us saying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, boys and girls. We're going to talk about transformation. It says, Plato, what do you use it for? What would happen if I just left it here and came back later? Would I still be able to play with it very easily? No, probably not. What if I start molding it, shaping it, turning it into something? You know, I could have just left the clay in the can and sealed it all up. Even if you don't do something with it and you leave it in the jar, it eventually will dry out and it doesn't do anybody any good. We could say this clay was transformed from being useless to useful. Transformed is a fancy word that means changed. You know, real clay is just a fancy type of mud, but potters can take that mud and shape it like I did this. And then they can even bake it and make beautiful pottery all from just fancy mud. So boys and girls, I hope you can go have some fun today and make your own creatures and see how you can transform from this to this.
Well, thanks, uh, Carrie. We are talking about transformation today, which is a change not only on the outside, but on the inside as well. And it comes about through influence. You know, one of the things, uh, or one of the funniest commercials, or some of the funniest commercials, I think, on TV right now, are those ones by Progressive Insurance about becoming your parents. Have you seen those? There's a fictional character, Dr. Rick, who's uh, an expert in uh, parentology and helping parents or helping adults when they buy a home, they become like their parents and he tries to uh, help them see that so that they can be who they want to be. It's, 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 I believe it's hilarious in many ways because it's so true. I know my kids and my wife sometimes will kid me about, oh, a behavior, something I do, that's just like your dad. Not like that's a bad thing. But it certainly is true how we can take on the characteristics uh, following the example that had been set by our parents even when we were young. Something that happens even without our knowledge. And so today as we're thinking about transformation and this whole sermon series about influence, we want to talk today about the powerful influence of a positive example. And how that influence through our example is part of how, how God, uh, God's Spirit is able to transform us. Well, again, we're thinking through this uh, series on influence, Christian leadership in a social media world. And even though the media, the technology has been changing, I believe these principles are timeless. That first of all, relationships are everything. We live in relationship with other people all the time. That's what we're created to do. And that God desires a relationship with us. That's why he came to us in Jesus. That then the type of relationship that we want to develop is one based on trust. Where it's safe. And God in Jesus has told us it's safe to trust God. God is all light and God is all love. So that means uh, we can come to Him with who we are and confess our sins, our faults, our shortcomings, and He'll still love us. And God will still care for us and be with us. And then also want us to change, to go and sin no more. Not out of uh, punishments, uh, a fear of punishment, but out of a desire to have life to its fullest. And so last week we talked about a vision. Once trust has been established, then we can talk about a, a positive future and the importance of a vision of where we're going, in a direction, and how Jesus lifted up a a vision in the Sermon on the Mount of what kind of people his followers would be. And he uh, uh, lifted that, uh, uh, that vision of how we're to treat one another, and forgive one another, and care for one another, and not make a show of how great we are or, or try to exalt ourselves, but be compassionate and caring for one another as a reflection of our relationship with God. That's what God has done for us. And even within that uh, sermon, one of the great uh, lessons to all the world about uh, boiled it right down to treat other people as you would want to be treated. And so that's a vision of, of empathy, of caring, of, of seeing another person's perspective. Now, that requires, or that vision then, the recognition is that we're not there yet. Ultimately, a vision of being more and more like Jesus, who reflects to us the very character of God. And so to be a follower, to be a disciple of Jesus, is to, a, a desire to follow His example, to, to, to allow His character, His nature, His very spirit to fill us so that we're changed, we're transformed, not only on the inside, but also on the outside. And specifically in, in what we do. Now, this is what Jesus wanted to do from the very beginning when he called those first fishermen uh, by the Sea of Galilee. And he told them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. He said, follow me. That means follow the example that I set for you. Then, then he, he went through the, the, um, 
Galilee and the region and he healed people. He taught people about God's kingdom. He also uh, gave his disciples the authority to do the same. He, he demonstrated, he set an example for them. And then he sent them out to, to proclaim the good news, to cast out demons, to heal uh, other people. And he continued to supervise them, had them come back and say, now how'd it go? And, and now here's some more lessons, and, and here's what I want you to do. So there was a transformation that was happening in those disciples, both in the words that they were hearing, uh, the example that they saw in Jesus, but also as they went out and tried to follow that example and do it themselves. And so now when we get to, in the Gospel of John in the 13th chapter, now this is all coming to a head. This is the last night that Jesus is with his disciples. And John tells us that he knew it. He knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Now if you know you've only got so much time, wouldn't you say, I, I, I better say what's really most important? and make the most of this limited time that I know is coming to an end. And I think that's exactly what Jesus did. Now, he didn't do it just with just words, though. It says that he got up from the table, he took off his outer robe, he tied a towel around himself, poured water into a basin, and then began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe it with the towel that he had tied around him. Now again, we have to remember 2,000 years ago, the rituals, the common practices that would have been in, in that day. And, and I've been in, in Africa and I've been in Southeast Asia where, where sandals are the standard footwear that almost everybody wears. And I've seen how there's a common practice. You come in and you, you just leave your sandals at the doorway and, and walk into the house. Now, in my culture, in my setting now, you know, uh, sandals are only worn occasionally when it's warm, and most of the time we wear shoes. And so we may lose some of the cultural significance of this everyday practice. Uh, people would come into a household, they'd leave their sandals at the door, but as you know, walking on dirt roads or wherever it might be, uh, with sandals, your feet get dirty. And so to wash people's feet was a common thing, but it was the job of the servant in the household. The, the person of lowest standing. And so Jesus uh, uh, now wants to give his disciples a message. He wants them to understand and remember something. And look how he does it. doesn't even use words. He washed their feet. Now, John tells us he had an interaction with Peter, and we're actually going to study uh, Peter in the, uh, our Lenten series, uh, sermon series. So we're going to come back to Peter and talk about him during Lent. At first, he refuses because, again, it seems a, a, a disrespectful or low for Jesus to do that. And he doesn't understand, but then he, he agrees to it and, of course, goes a little bit overboard, as Peter often does, and we'll learn more about that uh, during Lent. But then at chapter 13, down at verse 12, it says, After he washed their feet, he put on his robe, he returned to the table, and then he said these words, Do you know what I have done for you? He, he did something, what I have done for you. He said, you call me teacher and Lord, and that's right, that's what I am. But if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Now again, I don't know that he was talking specifically about the act of washing each other's feet every time they came in. He said, I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. You see, I think this is consistent with Jesus' message all along, that again, it's not just the act of washing the feet, that specific thing, but it is the act of being a servant to one another, of setting the other person's interests above your own, of being willing to lose your life and your well-being uh, for the well-being and the goodness of someone else. You know, again, this is consistent with what Jesus had been talking about, and this is the transformation that, that he was bringing to the world, to individuals, that their heart would be changed from being self-centered, and it's all about me, me first, to finding true life in what we give to others, 
and how we're centered upon the well-being of the relationships we have, the people around us. That we can find our joy by giving joy to others and find our well-being when we see that others uh, are cared for as well. See, that's part of who we are as human beings. We're connected. We're related to one another. Uh, Emotions are contagious. If we see somebody hurting, it should hurt us as well. If it doesn't, then we're missing something. A disconnect from another child of God. And so that when we see someone who's received a blessing, who who, uh, uh, has been comforted, strengthened, their needs have been met, and they feel good about that, honestly, it helps us feel good too. Now again, Jesus would tell us, you know, don't give alms and don't make a big deal, or don't make a big deal about it when you give alms or care for others or tell other people how great you are. But he does say when you do it, and you do it in secret, even you do it in private, you will receive a reward uh, out of your relationship with your Heavenly Father. But also, you'll feel good knowing that you've cared for someone else. And that brings you into community with them, a relationship with them. And that's so much better than having everything you want and yet being all alone not in a relationship, a meaningful, deep, caring relationship with anyone else. And so Jesus told them, I've set you an example. You should do as I have done to you. And he gives on, again, with words that a servant's not greater than the, the, the master, and yet, that's what I've done for you. A messenger is uh, not greater than the one who sent them, and yet, I, as your master, I, as your leader, have been the one to serve you. Now, he goes on to say, if you know these things, if you understand it in your head, uh, how blessed you will be if you do it. And here's now the, the combination of the inner belief, the connection, the trust in Jesus, and the outer action that helps bring about that uh, transformation. They, they both go hand in hand. In our scriptures, uh, the Apostle Paul would later say that it's by grace through faith you have been saved. That's the inner part. But then in the letter of James, James would write, but faith without works is dead. So we're talking about a transformation here that happens in us. And it is both what happens on the inside and what happens on the outside. And we know how difficult it can be to change our behaviors, to to experience that transformation. And what I believe is most helpful to enable us to do that is by following the example of someone else. By being in a relationship with someone else who's helping us to be transformed. That's why we've said the the importance of, of an example like a parent setting an example for a child. Or a coach, uh, a music instructor, a teacher, uh, teaching other people, younger people, on ways that they can improve and become more of God, who God called them to be. It's that companionship, that relationship, working towards a common goal. Because again, isn't it difficult to change? To reach for a goal or, or push yourself to become more and more like Jesus. Just like athletes, to become better and better at at what they do, how helpful it always is to have a coach, somebody who can help them achieve their goals. Um, An artist, a a piano player, uh, how great it is to have a teacher who can can set their goals with them and coach them along and, and set an example and show them how to do it so both they desire to do it, but they also have the help to make it happen. You see, Today we're talking about the transformation of the world begins with the transformation of God's people. The transformation of your community and the relationships that you have in your neighborhood begins with your own transformation inside to become more and more like Jesus and to enter into a deeper relationship with Him that helps us grow to be more like like Him, like Jesus, and then to act on it on how we relate with one another. 
in our United Methodist Wesleyan tradition. This is called sanctification. It's a means of God's grace that takes us beyond just who we are, but continues to make us more and more like Jesus. And what we're talking about today is how helpful, how positive it is when somebody is with us on that journey. So we've been talking and thinking together about a discipleship pathway for our church and in those qualities of prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness are all things, ways, behaviors that we can uh, uh, exhibit more and more to become like Jesus. But how to grow in our prayer life, be consistent in reading the scriptures, uh, being present in worship, setting goals for ourselves wherever we are right now, But instead of just staying where we are, how can we be transformed to be even more? One step at a time. One goal at a time. And who is helping me along that process of growth, of transformation? So as we move forward as a church in the coming year, that's one of the things that we're going to keep working on. Not only just the, the curriculum, the, the classes, the, the things that we do outside, but also the person who's helping us become more like Jesus. And the importance that you can point to, you know of someone who's walking with you on your path, who knows your goals, what you're trying to work on, trying to improve. They encourage you, they support you, and perhaps they are even setting a good example for you. Well, uh, as we look ahead now, we want to think about how we're going to do that as as a church. In this past uh, week, as you know, we celebrated the inauguration of a new president. And one of the highlights was the poem by Amanda Gorman, uh, the youngest national youth poet to speak at an inauguration. And she talked about or she read the poem that she wrote, The Hill We Climb. And for us, uh, what a great... uh, connection when she talked about scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid if we're to live up to our own time then victory won't lie in the blade but in the bridges we've made and here at asbury we believe jesus is the bridge who connects us to god and to one another Jesus is the bridge who transforms us uh, in our relationships and who we are so that when we go out and work and act in this world, it's a reflection of Him. I, I thought she concluded that poem in such a great hopeful way where she said, For there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. I love that. See, that process that we're talking about in relationships that we earn trust. And then see that light of who God is calling us to be as individuals in our neighborhood, but then even as a nation. And then to be that light, to be transformed so that we become first in our own hearts uh, who God wants us to be. Then in our actions, demonstrate that and show that and be a servant Uh, caring for those around us, following the example of Jesus. Well, as you think about your own life, think about how important your parents were as an example for you. And in some ways, you can't help it to be like them and follow that example. But as we grow older, at some point, we have the ability to to look around and choose the examples that we want to follow. And not just do it because that's what we've always known, but also to be able to say, I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like that person who is following Jesus. I want to follow the examples of others who are growing in their faith so that I can as well and I can be transformed and then I can set an example for others. Whether it's online or in person, that we are transformed uh, when Jesus is a part of our hearts, our lives, and then we go out to do and act in the way that He taught us and follow His example. Well, we want to think about uh, how we're going to do that as a church in this coming year. And uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have our, our annual report that's available online. And if you're at home following along, what we're going to do now is uh, commission and pray for the people that are... Uh, going to be good examples for us 
in the life of our church, in all the different committees, the resources, the things that we have in the life of our church. So um, if you're one of those uh, folks, first of all, if you uh, uh, can take a look, here is uh, our annual report. And uh, you can have, uh, see that on the screen here. Here's a bigger shot of it. Uh, inside, there's all kinds of good uh, information about what has happened in the past year. Uh, but if you go to the back, uh, and you'll see this heading, here is uh, the part where there are, oh, I'm sorry, here are the goals first. <laughs> here are the goals that we've got that we said this is the vision, in a sense, what we want to do for the year. I won't go through them all right now, but you can go back and look at them. This is as a church trying to say, this is the vision, this is the goals, this is what we want to accomplish this year. But then go back to the back and find this heading where here are the people who are going to help us along the way. And uh, we won't go through it all because there's several different committees, there are several different uh, uh, groups that are listed there. And a week ago, we had a Zoom meeting and orientation for all the people who are on the list here. And so uh, uh, you might take a look at that if you're one of those folks. Uh, uh, you can see there, uh, there's a, uh, I think there were, we had about 52 or over 50 people on the call last week. And there's a, a few more of them, and I think we've got one more shot. Uh, there they all are. This was both our staff, our paid staff, but all the folks that are listed on these pages uh, of our leadership ministry and teams. And what we want to do today is commission these folks and pray for them. And so if you're watching at home, I've got some questions for you to answer. In some ways, just like in the inauguration last week when uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris uh, took an oath of office to defend the Constitution, I'm going to ask you, are you willing to accomplish or to take on these uh, uh, tasks for the life of the church? And so again, uh, if you're following along at home as a leader, you're going you're gonna to answer the questions I'll ask of you. And if you're not a leader, but you're one of the members of the church, we want to pray for these folks, commission them as they help uh, lead our congregation to accomplish our goals so that we can be transformed and that we can set a good example and transform the world around us. And so first I want to address uh, all of you and say these words, Dear friends, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for leadership in the church. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligation and challenge you to do your best to the Lord, to this people, and to our ministry in the world. Live a life in Christ and make Him known in your witness and your work and your example. And so I want to ask you these questions. Uh, those of you that are willing to be in a leadership role in the church, do you this day acknowledge yourself to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, you right where you are at home, say, I do. And then will you devote yourself to the service of God in this world? And you can answer that right now where you're at. And will you so live that you enable this church to be a people of love and peace? And will you do all in your power to be responsible to the task for which you have been chosen, all of the committees, the groups, the teams that are listed in our annual report and those that will come about in the coming year? If so, you can answer right now. And so let us pray for these leaders. A mighty God, pour out your blessing upon these, your servants, who have given themselves to this particular ministries in your church. Grant them grace to give themselves wholeheartedly in your service. Keep before them the example of our Lord, who did not think first of himself, but gave himself for all of us. Let them share his ministry and consecration that they may enter into his joy, guide them in their work, reward their faithfulness with the knowledge that through them your purposes are accomplished. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now for our final hymn, um, a song today. Uh, Michael Reese has recorded a great song that talks about uh, let them see you in me. Uh, remembering how Jesus... Uh, taught us to set a, how he did set a good example 
and wanted us to do the same. Take away the melodies Take away the songs I sing Take away all the lights And all the songs you let me write Does the man I am today Say the words you need to say let them see you in me. Let them hear you when I speak. Let them feel you when I sing. Let them see you. Let them see you. am I without your grace? Another smile, another face, another breath, a grain of sand, passing quickly through your hand. I give my life an offering, take it all, take everything. Let them see you in me. Let them hear you when I speak. Let them feel you when I sing. Let them see you. Just let them see you in me. With every breath I breathe, sing a simple melody, but I pray they'll hear more than a song in me, in me. them see you in me. Let them hear you when I speak. Let them feel you when I sing. Let them see you. Oh, let them see you. speak. Let them feel you when I sing. Let them see you. Let them see you in me. Let them see you when he had finished washing their feet. He put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Okay, friends, that's how a transformation will happen, uh, following the example of Jesus, his heart, his spirit, his love within us, so that we can then go and share that love uh, with others and do God's will and serve others just as God uh, has served us in Jesus. So as you go out uh, this week, no, uh, we'll be back here next week and celebrate the confirmation and also the importance of regeneration of how we raise up disciples who can raise up more disciples and in that way be a part of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. 
So as you go out there this week, go a setting an example for Jesus. Your influence will be known in ways that you may never see yourself. But indeed, it will be part of what God can do to help transform this world. And go with the confidence, the grace, the strength of knowing that God goes with you. For the God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit goes with you now and always. Amen.